thank you very much. You know, I'm, uh, I, I, I cannot think of uh, any box that is not ticked by this award. Uh, first of all, it's an award, and it's always nice to receive an award, but it's not any award, you know. It's, uh, it's from my peers, and from some of my peers I most like and respect. And, you know, being recognized by people is one thing. Being recognized by your family is harder to achieve. And it is so much more worthy that, that it is really something I'm, uh, I'm very happy. And, you know, and, and I guess I'm talking for many of us here. Six months ago, having a presidential conference seemed unthinkable. And uh, I will not say, you know, <laughs> I see all the masks and <laughs> yeah, all the blue faces. So it's not normality, but yeah, it's so close to normality. That's something, you know, it, it, I, I'm tremendously happy to be here. But a little bit more about Nextflow. So uh, I'm assuming everybody knows everything about Nextflow, but of course that's not true. Many of you here may not even have heard about Nextflow, so I should really start by explaining what Nextflow is. So Nextflow is a pipeline language. You can write your pipelines with Nextflow, your genomics pipeline typically, but it could be anything, and you can run them anywhere with Nextflow. It will be your, your your, it will organize your, 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 your computation, and that's on the cloud, on an HPC, on a laptop. Nextflow will take care of parallelization in some, you know, relatively straightforward way. I'll explain a little bit. And more importantly, it supports containers, reproducibility, and therefore contributes to the FAIR concept. You know, this idea of reproducibility, findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reproducibility and so Nextflow contribute to the R. Now, you know, you've seen all of these things a lot. You know, there are plenty of things claiming to do the same thing. So I'll try to explain to you a little bit why I think Nextflow is special. And obviously I think Nextflow is special. Obviously I'm biased, so you'll have to, to make your own research on this before trusting me. But why is it special? So let me very briefly touch on Unix, which most of you are familiar with. So in Unix we pipe all the time. And that's something actually computer scientists really don't like about biologists. Biologists love, you know, uh, bioinformatician to be more precise, they love the concept of piping. So what does this mean? You have a process, A, that is producing bits of data, elements of identifiable data. And you have a B process that will be consuming this data. And the bits of data will go through the pipe sign. And so the most, the easiest, the easiest example of this is when you cat a file into less. The unit of data is a line, and it goes line by line, and less receives the data through the pipe and will flash it one line after one line. That's a very powerful concept if you think about it. It links, it can link. That's bad, bad style. <laughs> Whoops. That's where I tell my students to leave the room, please. <laughs> I hope I have to figure out a way to put this in silent mode. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so pipe is similar to something that is called reactive programming, which means that you have a program that waits and waits. You know, it waits. It's just silent. And suddenly something arrives. It wakes up and consumes it. And then it waits again. The program doesn't need to know when things will arrive. It does not need to know how many things will arrive. It simply needs to know that things will arrive packet after packet. That's how it works. And you can imagine very, very complex networks connected just that way. And that's exactly how Nextflow works. And for those of you familiar with Unix make file, it's exactly the opposite of a Unix make file. In the make file world, you define a graph of dependency. And before doing anything, you have to compute the entire graph. And when you're done, you start the computation. And so, the difference between Nextflow and Makefile is that Nextflow flows without any big picture knowledge. Makefile prepares. And I insist on this distinction because there are really two tools that are on the same niche this day, Snake Make and Nextflow. And it's quite interesting to me to observe that they belong to exactly, they use exactly opposite principles. And there are plenty of reasons why in some situations you want to do a Makefile client thing and others when you want to do a Nextflow style thing. In fact, we wanted to start with, with make file like everybody, but if you have very tiny operations, but zillions of them, the make file was a killer. Snake make people found nice way, nice tricks to go around this. But you know, it's interesting to 
insist that these two approaches are based on absolutely opposite principles. So uh, uh, this is what Nextflow looks like. This is probably our first ever pipeline. And what I like, quite like about it is that, you know, all you have to do is that you have to take things that were already working, bits and pieces of pipeline, and you just wrap them uh, a bit like you will do with HTML. You're saying what kind of input they expect and what kind of output they will generate. And then all of these things get automatically linked to one another by the description of their output. This graph here that I'm showing here gets automatically generated by Nextflow once you have decided, when you have defined who goes where, you know, what goes in and what goes out, and then automatically all of these things get connected. And of course, the computation is happening here. So this thing here will be waiting for, it's a little bit awkward, I, I, I may be missing something. So here, this thing here will be generated multiple alignment. And what is it? It's just a process waiting. And when sequences come in, bloof, it generates an alignment. If you deploy this thing on a large number of processors, implicitly it becomes parallelized. You know, this is, uh, this is an implicit implementation of uh, embarrassingly parallel problems, which are the problems we encounter most of the time in biology these days. You know, your typical situation is that you have a matrix to process where every row is independent from the others, and you can throw all of these things. That's what Nextflow does. That's really the core of Nextflow. But there's more to it. And the reason it made it in Nature Biotech is actually here. You have all heard about the reproducibility crisis in, in, in research these days. We usually think of wet lab and, uh, and, and gels difficult to reproduce and all these things. But this also happens in computer science, in computerized analysis. They are difficult to reproduce. And as it turned out with Nextflow, with the containerization, we address this problem, and that's how we could make it in, in Nature Biotech. I've just posted a blog entry where I explain a little bit how the story went, and that's quite an interesting story. It's Evan Flodden who figured out this thing, and Evan figured out at the time with Callisto, and I'm glad that Lyre never, never hit on us on this because uh, you don't want to have a fight with uh, Lyre, but the beauty with uh, Callisto is that uh, you know, you run it on, uh, on Amazon Linux, on our Mac OS X, you're going to get roughly the same results, you know, on the differentially expressed genes, but slight differences. These differences are very tiny. They will not change the uh, 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 interpretation of your results. But if six months later you have to rerun exactly the same pipeline to get exactly the same results, you're in trouble. Why is it? We don't know. Think of a computer like a machine with moving parts where every line of code in the operating system will be a moving part. It's a huge machine. We've never built machines larger than this. You're talking about hundreds of millions of moving parts. It will be unexpected that two alternative operating systems give exactly the same results for very, very low level reasons. And that's just what we catch here. And the solution, the solution is very simple. You just dockerize everything. I don't know if Mac OS 6 or Amazon Linux is better, and I don't care. I know the differences are neglectable. I simply want to have exactly the same result anywhere. I don't want to go into an hospital with my genome or my exome and be told this is the driving gene and go into another hospital with exactly the same data, the same software analysis, and them telling me this is your driving gene and the two genes being different. You want these things to be harmonized. And that's what containerization does for you. Nextflow also allows you to bundle amazingly complicated things with, 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 a, with a container. This thing, it's not us. It's what really got us excited. It's a companion uh, uh, pipeline at the Sanger. I think they have something like 40 packages that are all bundled together. I mean, it's excruciatingly complicated. And they nailed it with Nextflow. You know, we were very excited. About six months, one year after we put the code online, this thing appeared, and this was so nice. And when you, computer, when you dockerize it, you can see here, this is a gene prediction pipeline. You get exactly the same number of genes predicted on any platform. So that's what you want for reproducibility. It's very important. Now, of course, giving bad news is only fun if you have bad news for everybody, right? Otherwise, pff. And so uh, Maria Shetzu in my group, just figured out that not only was this true for the companion paper, uh, pipeline of the Sanger, but it was also true for phylogenetic tree. These are tiny variations we have here. They, you know, on most of your trees, they will not even change the topology. They will neglectably change the branch length. But if you think that in the next data sets, like the kinases, for instance, when you'll have uh, finished the Earth's biogenome, you will have about 1.5 uh, million species, therefore nearly a billion kinases to align and to classify, 
the topology will change for sure with these tiny variations. And so, uh, 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 what can you do? Exactly what we have been proposing with NextFlow, integrating, integrating your integrating your, your computation with dockerized version of your pipelines, and then that allows you know everything is quite smoothly integrated in NextFlow, where you can simply automatically check out what you need from GitHub and all these kind of things. Now, you know, over my career, I've often had to, I've had a few successful projects, but you know, when you're successful, you always have to ask yourself, why is this successful? And more often than not, I have to admit that I did not find the true reason for success. And that's very important because if you know why you've been successful, you can keep pushing in the right direction. But if you don't know exactly or if you don't find the true reason for your success, you may be pushing in the wrong direction. And this happens every once in a while. So I had to ask myself, what made NextFlow so successful? Because it's true, 500 citations, we did not expect it to be that successful, frankly. And, and uh, so why is that? First of all, this is the urgency. It's easy to use for very urgent problems we had in the lab. You know, we didn't, we didn't sit with a team of computer scientists and, uh, and wrote the documentation and implemented it in C++ and all these kind of things. No, we were just in a hurry. I just started the lab in Barcelona. I had tons of pipelines that were important for my production. And I had to get these things in production now because and the students were long gone and they were very good students who had better things to do than writing documentation. And therefore, I had no idea how to run this pipeline. And I took all the pipelines and I told to Paolo, here are the pipelines, please do a miracle. And he did. And this really was made by users for users. And that, that's really, I think, if I had to say what I believe to be the main reason for the success of this project, it's a small scale project by users for themselves. Uh, the, the alternatives were excruciatingly complicated. CWL was a killer. And the user community, you know, the small people immediately recognize themselves with us. You know, they recognize that, you know, it's a lab like ours and they've developed, and I think, you know, they make uh, roughly the same trajectory for the same reasons. Um, there is another point that I want to stress because it's very important. As you can see here, no, you cannot. It's readability. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, I'm French, and so I, 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 I tend to think that I'm allowed to consider myself a philosopher for a few minutes every once in a while. <laughs> so I, I, I'll do a little bit of French philosophy. And so why is readability so important? You know, um, all of us in this room, and maybe unfortunately some of us already, some medical pipeline will soon, soon decide on our future. Uh, uh, and within five to 10 years maximum, you will get your exome done or some part of your genome. And this will go into a pipeline. And the pipeline will spit out a number. And if this number is below some threshold, well, the social security will deny you access to the magic treatment that cures everybody and has no side effect. You know, like, for instance, the hepatitis C, a new drug, or this kind of thing. You know? If you're above the magic number, you will get the treatment. Now, the sense of unfairness that we'll, we'll unfortunately feel when this happens to us will be devastating. You know, it's like a double punishment. You're sick and you don't have access to the correct treatment, to the best treatment, to what you think will, should be the best treatment. If you do not believe in the fairness of the pipeline that generates this output, you will not only be devastated, you will be angry against the system. You know, there will be a lot of anger. Therefore, you must have people you trust, you will not be able to read the pipeline, but you must have access to people whom you trust who will be able to read the pipeline. And the larger the community of people you trust able to read these pipelines, the more likely you as a citizen are to trust the system and to accept that this is not the system being unfair, it's life being unfair to you. And life being unfair to you is something we can accept and comprehend, okay? That's why I think that making pipelines readable, you know, we always talk about open source pipeline, but we have to go beyond. They also have to be readable. And I believe that's one of the things NextFlow contributes to. You know, and you know, we are in the COVID era. We've all heard about fake news, and that's really a pain. And I have this, you know, you can quote me on this, probably a lot of people have thought about this, but if news were alleles, fake news will be the fittest by far. It's unbelievable. The, the fitness of fake news is amazing. And why do we get fake news? It's because we have black boxes, things that are not transparent enough. And the conservationists have a very good time, a very easy time, putting anything they want in these black boxes. 
And the only way to fight against all of this is not the government telling you, this is true, this is not true. No, it's full transparency. This is our only defense against, black, uh, against fake news. And I believe that readability of decision-making processes is just as important as anything that will allow us. You know, in France, we have this uh, strange algorithm for assigning students to, to, to universities. And uh, for some time, the algorithm was not open source, and this created a lot of tension. So this has to be open source. All of these things have to be open source. And, and I'm very happy to, 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 to mention NF Core, which is a follow-up of Nextflow, not driven by us. It's driven by SciLife Lab in Sweden, and especially Phil UL. And, and these guys have generated an amazing collection of reference pipelines, very well annotated, very well documented, extremely readable and transparent by my own standards. And this is not only a collection of pipelines, it is also a, 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 a standard for Nextflow. And this is having a huge influence on how these things are being used. Uh, um, we, are, uh, we are big users of NF Core with something called BovReg, which is uh, one of the H2020 uh, 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 project for uh, a better, it's, it's kind of encode for farmed animal. And, and this is meant to help uh, ensuring better sustainability uh, with farming under, under the FANG umbrella. And, and NF Core is a big thing for us because this is allowing us to exchange, to, to, to make a lot of things interoperable across all of these consortiums. Now, one of the things that, that made me the happiest with Nextflow is how successful my students have been. You know, you run a lab, and the people going through your lab are meant to be successful when they leave the lab. They are meant to be successful academically or in business. And in this case, four former members of my lab went on to incorporate two highly successful companies, LifeBeats by Maria Chatsu and Paolo, Pablo Prieto, and Sequera Labs by Paolo Di Tommaso and Evan Flodan. And, you know, these guys have been tremendously successful. They've raised money, and these two guys, Sekera Lab, have just raised five million euro dollars, or, or, well, five million euros, I think, and 5.5 dollars, and they secured two uh, uh, Shan Zuckerberg initiative grants. You know, that's how successful this project have been, has been in such a small amount of time. Now, you know, uh, uh, like Born used to say, uh, uh, Predictions are difficult, especially for the future. And so I, I'm not going to tell you that they will become a unicorn or not. But you know, I secretly dream that they may become the first Catalan unicorn. It's, uh, it's certainly not something I could guarantee, but it's something that has suddenly become possible. And that, that it's extremely exciting to think that such a success has been coming out of such a low-scale, you know, hands-on projects like Nextflow was in its early days. And so... Uh, what is next on our table and what are we going to do is, uh, and actually I have to thank the award, uh, even though it's not a huge amount of money, it's, it's the best money you can get in academia because uh, it's soft money. So all the things that you have to justify and that are complicated to buy become easy to, to, to do with these things. So this is really a very important lubricant. I have to just take a second to thank the CRG. You know, I will never have secured any grant on Nextflow. I'm not an IT guy, my lab is not an IT place, and so we try to get a little bit of money, but we never manage. The reason Nextflow exists is because we have a core budget, we have a good core budget at the CRG, and with this core budget, I can do what I want. And if I fail, you know, every five years I get evaluated, and the CRG has the possibility to tell me, you know, you're using the resources, but you're not doing things good enough, you have to leave the place for someone who would. But as long as you can achieve things, you get supported unconditionally. And that's what a core budget is all about. And that's why Nextflow is here. And that's why we've been successful in quite a few projects, actually, thanks to this core budget. And so the next thing is something called NF Benchmark, which is about the interoperability of benchmark. This was actually, if I go back in time, this was the original intention be behind Nextflow. I think building blocks that are easy to connect with one another and you can measure a lot of things. And now with deep learning, this is getting very exciting and this is going to change a lot. There is also another development which I'm very happy about. It's now genomics and bioinformatics. We want to start, you know, I started this journal about three years ago now. Some members of the CIB are, are on our board, like, uh, like Philippe and uh, Philippe Boucher. 
And we are going to start a section dedicated to pipelines. So that's a section where this will be application notes, but really centered on pipeline and making sure the pipeline are deposited the way they should be. They are documented the way they should be so that they can be programmatically used and combined with one another, you know, and all this IT plumbing that, 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 that is so beautiful when it works well. And, you know, the kind of things you'd like never had to have to know about because they work so well, because that's what IT is really about. You know, you, you, you want to forget, it's like electricity. Do you know how electricity is produced? I have no idea. Uh, uh, 150 years ago, there was an electricity chief officer in every company in, well, uh, 120 years ago, there was an electricity chief officer in every company. And you don't want to have an electricity chief officer in your institute, right? That's the last thing you want. And, uh, <laughs> And we'll have also uh, something we'll deploy called Ocean, which is a cool thing, you know, about the reproducibility of papers with, with paper coming along with all the codes interoperated. And so uh, 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 let me finish by thanking all the people who made this possible, and, and especially Evan Flodon and Paolo Di Tommaso, who really were the leaders on this project. Jose has just joined us and is working on, uh, 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 on NF Benchmark. And uh, uh, um, a lot of that stuff is available on nextflow.io, the code and, and, and everything if you want to run it. I'll mention here that the Swiss Bioinformatics is going to run a Nextflow workshop uh, 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 mid of November. This will be run jointly with the CRG. I don't have the pointer, the, time is not, the, the page is not up yet, but uh, get in touch with Diana Marek at the SIB and uh, she will give you, uh, this will be online, eh? this will be online, so this can be uh, worldwide. There is a limited, uh, there is a limitation in attendance because we provide support to the users, and so we have a limited number of people who can help with this. Thank you, thank you for your attention, and thank you again to the SIB for awarding me this award. <laughs>